We're looking at a mini, mini PC. This is the Geekom Mini Air 12. This is the Geekom Mini Air 12. It's 117 by 112 by 34.2 millimeters. So it's thinner than the other Intel NUC sized computers uh, that you'd see from Geekom or even Intel or whom, whomever else. Now this features the Intel N100 and that's one of the super efficient, very low power six watts. Now what do you see what you can do with this thing that's only six watts? So it's four cores, four threads, and those are the efficiency cores only. I think someone was like, you know what? These efficiency cores are more than enough for a lot of the stuff that people do. And they're really low power. Now they're, and they're not multi-threaded or anything, but they go up to 3.4 gigahertz and you got six megabytes of cache. Yeah, plus you've also got 12th gen Intel UHD graphics. Uh, and this also have DDR5 memory. We've got 16 gigabytes of that running at 4,800 megahertz, plus a 512 gigabyte SSD and the price. Let me just show you. It's only 250 bucks. This coupon codes for both the USA and the UK. So you can be able to get $20 off using Geekom's official store, which is what you should do. Or if you're a wild person, well, you can get $20 off on Amazon as well. All that's in the description. So I'll cover what it is and then I'll try to talk about who it's for. Thanks to Hookies for sponsoring this video. Now these are OEM Windows keys. That means that you do your own tech support. You're not gonna be relying on Microsoft and they're generally locked to the hardware. But look at this price, $22.92. No, 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 we got a coupon code. Click on buy now. Put in coupon code TS25, hit apply, and that price comes down to $17.19. Now when you compare that to the outrageous prices for Microsoft, you'd have to buy this many, many, many times to equal the price of one regular key from Microsoft. As of right now, this Windows 10 Pro key will unlock Windows 11. We also have Windows 10 Home, Windows 11, you can buy it directly, Windows 11 Home, and we have two flavors of Office. Once you're finished, all you have to do is click on your user account up here, go to your user center, click on My Purchase Orders, just View Keys and Codes, and you can just copy and paste your key, hit Start, type Activate, click on Activation Settings, paste it in there, click on Next, and you will be activated. So head on over to hookies.com to get yourself an OEM Windows key at a price that makes sense. On the front of the unit, we have your power button, and then we have a headphone jack. Wish they'd put those on the back, but I think I'm a minority there. We've got a USB 3.2 Gen 2 port and a Type C port. The one on the front, that's data only. Looking around at the back, we've got a mini display port 1.4. And then we also have RJ45 right there. That's a gigabit. Then we have two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, a Type-C and an HDMI. Type-C on the back will also do video. You can have up to three monitors at the same time on this and up to 8K. Then looking at the side, you have an SD card reader. You got Wi-Fi 6, you got Bluetooth 5.2. So pretty much all the modern stuff. And then on the inside there, we do have an M.2. The form factor is 2280 and it's Gen 3 by 4. So not Gen 4 by 4, Gen 3 by 4. All right, when you look under the hood there, you'll notice that we only have one RAM slot and one M.2 slot. That's it. So. There's not a lot of room for expansion and it's only single channel on the inside. So there's where they've kind of had to make some sacrifices to keep the price low and keep the size very small. So if you want to, um, you know, expand anything, you're going to have to swap out the components that are already on the inside there. I want to mention that the Mini Air is also basically whisper silent. I've got a game running on it in the background. It's paused, but there's a game running and I can't hear this unit. So it's, I think a lot of it's just because it's so low power, it's not going to generate an extreme amount of heat. So the fans don't need to ramp up that much. So yeah, it's extremely quiet basically all the time. So the unit's really small. I mean, you can mount it places, mount it on the back of your monitor if you wanted to. If you wanted to get one of these for everybody in the office, that'd be just fine, depending on what you're doing at your office. I mean, if you're doing like 3D rendering and stuff, maybe not for that. For general office use, this is gonna be great. Let's look at my canned benchmarks first. And you can see there, this is a low power part. So this is not something you're gonna be using for rendering. Not recommended for that at all. Here's the Geekbench single and multi-core scores. So if you wanna do a test at home, this is Geekbench 6. You can check it out and see how yours compares to this one. Here's our OpenCL test. So you can do a comparison on that as well if you wanted to. And then I also ran uh, Heaven Benchmark. And we didn't do so hot with that. This is not really made for 3D gaming at all. Now I say that, but you can game on this. And I did game on this because I game on everything. So let's run some tests. You know I love emulation. So of course I opened up Simu just to see how this is gonna run. This is a Twilight Princess. After the shaders compiled, it runs quite well. And I've even got the resolution scaled up, which I don't usually like to do. I'm just trying to tax it. I generally like to play this at native resolution and with a few of the settings turned on, but it's it looks better at native resolution with the correct scaling and all that. But yeah, it ran perfectly fine. When I loaded up Simu and tried to play Zelda, no, this is not something that's going to be able to play 
um, games like Zelda and Simu. However, you know what? If you turn things down even farther than you should, let's say if you go crazy and do what I'm about to do right now. I want to try to play the Switch, so I'm going to use Yuzu. I mean, the Wii didn't work, so let's try the Switch. Th that's weird logic. Well, look at this. I'm playing a Switch game. It plays okay. This is Mario Kart. Now, this doesn't look perfect because I'm playing it at half resolution. But once the shader cache starts to build up, it starts to get smoother. You'll see a few hitches here and there. And that's the nature of these things. Uh, once you go around the track a few times, the shader cache should build up, and then you won't have any more of these hitches or slowdowns. I don't think, it, at least. But it's some games are going to be playable, even on Switch with Yuzu, especially like strategy games and RPGs. Those will be totally fine. But I like playing this one because it's fast paced and you can get an idea of how it's going to run. So yeah, it's stutters here and there, but this will give you an idea of how powerful those little, uh, you know, the Intel UHD graphics are and those, those little efficiency cores can be in the right circumstances. Now again, this is running, you know, at slightly under 30 FPS, but I think it's doing a pretty good job for what it is. All right, we're going to check out a hat in time, shall we? It runs okay, but you have to run it on low. That's basically it. But you can play this game. It's a newer game. You know, it kind of harkens back to the days of the N64 3D platformer games. It plays okay. Um, I mean, I think you could play it. It doesn't look amazing on low, but you can play it. So as far as emulation goes, if you're looking at like a Raspberry Pi or something and you're like, hey, I should get one of those. No, no, no. If you need a computer and you want a Raspberry Pi type device to play emulators and stuff like that, then this is going to be much better than that. PSP games run perfectly well. Let me just skip forward a little bit. I have no idea. What, <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing here in this game, but you know it. It works really well. So you can play your PSP games. You can play your GameCube games. But a lot of games will play very well on this machine. So for me, this device is really just good for the money because it can emulate everything up until a Dolphin, which is like all your GameCube and Wii games. Uh, it tries to emulate some stuff uh, you know, above and beyond that, but I, you know, a lot of times I always look at these things just from the perspective of what games can it play, and I don't think that's quite fair because that's not exactly what this is going to be for. If you need these to do like office work, productivity, some editing, photo editing, they're going to be just fine for that as long as it's not too heavy duty. Um, with office work, you can pretty much put anything on it, but general use, email, uh, if you have an office and you want to get a million of these things and give them to everybody and put them on the back of their, their monitors, it would be good for that. But I also like to know that it does have enough horsepower to replace like a Raspberry Pi and go way above and beyond that when it comes to gaming. You can play a lot of other games. I mean, it'll play Oblivion just fine as well. Um, so you can play your whole entire backlog of old games and just, you know, like DOS and old Windows games and, and whatnot. Those will run just fine on this. So when you really look at like what you can do with it for, for six watts, Yes, it's not going to like make anybody go crazy when it comes to like 3D performance, uh, even with games that are a couple of years old. But I think it does a pretty good job for the money. The last thing that you could use this for, since it does have those four cores, if you want to have like an always on server and install Proxmox on this, I would probably swap out for a bigger uh, SSD. But with Proxmox, you can use network shares for your hard drive space. So if you wanted to do something like that, you could. And if you're running, you know, VMs that don't require a lot, you can put, you know, a decent amount of RAM in there and then have maybe four VMs running, maybe five, depending on what you're doing. And, you know, like little Debian machines. You could even run like Pi-hole on one as a VM. That would probably be something that you could use this for. And you wouldn't have to worry about it really impacting your power bill since it doesn't draw much and it's not going to be loud and it's not going to get hot. So that's something else you might want to consider if you're not just going to use it for Windows. You could do that. So that's it. Low power. Tiny. Gets the job done. And uh, in my opinion, a pretty good price for what you're getting with this. Um, I mean, of course... It would be nice if it was 10 times faster, but we're working with a certain price point here. And I've come to kind of like these efficiency cores when, you know, looked at from the correct context, but they can do they can do a lot more than I thought they could do. Last thing I'll mention is um, I'm going to put this on sale. It's not on sale yet, but we're going to do this for half of the original price. So 20 bucks right now will get you a good gaming keyboard and it feels good. If you spill your beverage on it, no big deal. And you can cycle through several different color options. It's not full on RGB. We don't need a carnival on our desk. We just need some 
sophistication. You can turn off the lights if you want to as well. So yeah, head on over there and you can grab one of these for just 20 bucks over at epicpants.com. I will see you there. Mm -hmm.